I have always been a member of Grand Chité. We had a group of our ballet family, and there is no family like the ballet family. We are so close with one another because we have worked so hard together for the good of the ballet. So the idea of a Grand Jeté, of a celebratory dinner at the end of the season came about. I know many times we were at First National Bank and had a very elegant black tie dinner together, lots of fun, lots of toasts, lots of excitement. Everybody was dressed very elegantly. When Musya and Yasha would walk into the room at Founders, they were the king and queen, beyond question. They were the shining stars, but we were equally important. It wasn't that the, they lorded it over us. They recognized our role because without money and without intense partisanship, there would not be a ballet. In those early Grand Jeté dinners, I remember the clink of the, of the wine glasses. Uh, I remember the, the just burbling excitement because people enjoyed being there. We were all comrades in the field, as it were, and here was our time to celebrate. We were all celebrating together the end of another season, looking forward to a new season, watching the ballet grow, watching it go from student performers to the first few professionals, and finally it was all professional. All of this development was celebrated at those times. We are a family. We are ballotomates. We, we are energized by the ballet, and then I think in turn, we energize the ballet. I started ballet at about four, and actually was in the first baby class of Miss Larkin and Mr. Jasinski's. And I think that I was the first person to be in the baby class and go all the way up and into the company. Uh, for the Grand Jeté at that time, um, in the 80s, there was one event a year, and that was usually down at, I think it was at First National Bank. They hosted us for a black tie dinner. And it was um, quite the event, you know, probably a champagne reception and visiting with the other supporters of Tulsa Ballet. And then a uh, lovely, lovely dinner. The artistic directors would speak, maybe there'd be a guest speaker. They were always very happy occasions. Uh, the company by then really was coming into its own and it really at the time I joined was at the culmination of the Jasinski's career. I remember this very distinctly. George Singer was either president or had been or something and they were talking about this the first endowment campaign which was going to be to buy this building, the building we're in now, and buy the land next to it and um, no one was willing to chair it. And at the time, I was really young and didn't know any better, probably. And so I, I decided to do it, because at the time, Tulsa Ballet Theater was spread out in five different locations, and we had to have everything under one roof somehow. And Walt Helmrich was very involved in that, and Donna Boss. We ended up, we raised 2.6, I think it was, at the time, and it was enough to get this, to purchase the building and kind of get things running. And Mr. Jasinski was still alive. And I got to make that phone call to talk to Ms. Larkin and Mr. Jasinski about that. And they popped open this bottle of champagne they'd been saving forever and while I was on the phone. It was, it was a memory that I, that I will always have, really exciting. The name founder started with Jerry Noble. She was the development director at the time, and actually Billy Barnett was the first founder's chair, she and Howard, and then Joe and I were second. I do think that founders changed quite a bit over the years because it did begin as a dinner to thank people for 
giving money over and above maybe what they would have given normally. And then um, I think Marcello came on and, and saw a need to make it a lot more personal involving the dancers. And I, I honestly think that was a brilliant idea because people do want to get to know people better up close. And with dancers, it's very hard to do because they're on a stage and you're far away from them. And so the idea of including dancers and getting to know, um, getting to know them and seeing them in action when they're actually sweating and when they don't have on costumes, they have whatever on that they, they rehearse in, is wonderful. It, it just makes you more a part of it. The first founders that I remember were in Studio C and uh, kind of packing in there um, and just it got to the point where there wasn't any more space in there and people would come late and they'd be standing almost in the hall outside of uh, Studio C to watch. And then we transitioned into Studio A or what's now Studio K. Uh, while it was still in existence and we started out with chairs on the south wall and the west wall and then the next thing that happened we had them on the east wall and we had them inside the library and when the, they would finish sometimes they'd be sitting almost in the laps of the, the people that were there for founders because that's where they needed to be to go back on stage uh, then from there uh, we just kind of had to play dance around while Studio K was being built because at some of the time when they knocked out the north wall we couldn't have founders in here so we were actually in Studio B some of the time. Oh, I think it's one of the best things Tulsa Ballet has to offer. Uh, I know of no other performing arts entity that has uh, an opportunity for you to come and be as up close and personal with the dancers, watch them during a rehearsal that's designed specifically for you, and, and sit and visit with the dancers, which is why most of us are here, is you know because we enjoy uh, those men and women who make such beautiful art. I think everyone that I've brought is just kind of amazed uh, because while everybody knows of Tulsa Ballet, they don't know Tulsa Ballet. They don't understand the level of commitment, the level of expertise, the quality of the, what we really have here in Tulsa. They don't understand that this is not any longer and has not been for years a regional company. It is an international company that brings in some of the most talented dancers, the best choreographers, and we get to see it right here in Tulsa. From the board president's perspective, I would say that Founders is one of the most critical things we do at Tulsa Ballet, besides the performances, of course, but um, <laughs> in order to enable the performances, of course, we have to have the support of our patrons, and the Founders group are our most dedicated and loyal patrons, and the events that we offer them are just so much fun. It's a true insider's look at Tulsa Ballet. They would never have that experience otherwise. And you just get to hear lots of interesting tidbits. You get to know the dancers. And it's just a really, really good way to recruit and develop patrons to become donors. So when we first started coming, it was still in the old studio where it was crowded and everything, but it wasn't so comfortable, but it was a good way to meet people <laughs> because we were right next to each other and you just kind of had to start chatting. And, um, you know, as time's gone, time has gone on, you know, we've just made so many good friends through Founders. I mean, Steve loves coming to Founders. And ballet is originally my passion, although he enjoys it too, but the events here through Founders, there's just so many great people that come. I brought a young man just to the last Founders last year that I had just met him. He um, had just moved to Tulsa from Atlanta and I heard from someone else that he was a big ballet fan. So fortunately we were having a Founders before the creation series. So I brought him and introduced him to all of my friends and then um, we saw the performance and then afterwards at the reception on stage he got to meet all the dancers and he got to meet Ma because we had danced one of Ma's pieces at that particular and he was just absolutely, every time I see him, he talks about it. 
partner and I came to the Founders event. Uh, had a great time. It was, I still remember the experience because it was back when it was, everything was on in this room and there was a sword fight that they were uh, doing and everybody was ducking and it was getting you know, there was like, oh, this is an exciting thing. And then we went the following week to see the ballet on stage and it was such a great experience of seeing, seeing it up close and personal and then seeing it on stage at the PAC. The transition from being a Founders member to cheering Founders has been a great experience because I've had such, uh, such great commitment from the ballet staff and from all the other members that have been helpful with suggestions, lots and lots of suggestions, and we've been implementing as many of those as possible. Meeting the choreographers has been a wonderful experience for me, and as the chair of the Founder Society, I have had the opportunity to actually meet with them and take them to back to the places they're staying and get to know them a little better sometimes. And it's interesting when they're away from this facility, what they actually say about the Tulsa Ballet. Um, it's been great hearing that we are such a world-class facility, a world-class ballet that's coming with no prompting at all from them and that they are intimidated sometimes by working with our dancers because they're all so good. My dreams for the future of Founders would be that people can't wait to come to the next Founders event because they don't know exactly what's going to happen. But I think it's a very important thing for Tulsa that we have such a strong ballet company from an economic development standpoint and I think that that's a recruiting tool that a lot of companies use to be able to recruit young people and I think that we can build on that with founders and continue to get younger people involved. For years we had come to Founder Society studio previews wedged into folding chairs that were metal to metal or wood to wood without a breath of space between them with our legs and our shoulders pressed against both of our neighbors in a 78 or 80 degree studio that felt sweltering after adding 100 or more guests to it and we thoroughly enjoyed it. We were part of the stage, part of the action. It was up close and personal to the extreme. And then, then we embraced Marcello's vision of a true performance theater. And in 2008, we opened Studio K. We moved the Founder Society previews there and they remain there today. Still a small, intimate space. You can still see everything that happens on the stage. There is still that amazing exchange of energy between the audience and the dancers and creates that uniquely synergistic experience. So a lot of the good elements from the past have been retained, but now we have professional audio and lighting and a little bit more comfort for the audience and a real state-of-the-art ambiance. It has to be one of the top theater experiences in Tulsa, and I think the Founder Society previews rank right up there with one of the top experiences in the city. I think there are two important perspectives about the Founder Society since moving to Studio K. The first was best said by Dance Insider at the grand opening of Studio K when they wrote to the world something along these lines. What Tulsa Ballet has created is what a community-based arts revolution looks like, including the spectacular Studio K dedicated to the Founder Society and the creation of new works. That's a profound announcement to the world that Tulsa Ballet has arrived on yet one more level. And the other perspective is a Founder Society renewal rate over a period of recent years that exceeds 90%. Now in this age of entertainment overload with such a huge array of options for every entertainment dollar, for anyone to say they have a 90% renewal rate is incredibly positive. I think we attribute that, of course, to the loyalty of our patrons who we value above all else, and also to the quality and the fun of the Founder Society. The Founder Society has managed to embrace its history, and yet through the years evolved to remain modern and relevant. Tulsa Ballet's Founder Society is a winner in anyone's books.